August 11, a message about Ammon. This message was given concerning the Ammonites. This is what the Lord says. Are there no descendants of Israel to inherit the land of Gad? Why are you who worship Moloch living in its towns? In the days to come, says the Lord, I will sound the battle cry against your city of Rabbah. It will become a desolate heap of ruins and the neighboring towns will be burned. Then Israel will take back the land you took from her, says the Lord. Cry out, O Heshbon, for the town of Ai is destroyed. Weep, O people of Rabbah, put on your clothes of mourning. Weep and wail, hiding in the hedges, for your god Moloch with his priests and officials will be hauled off to distant lands. You are proud of your fertile valleys, but they will soon be ruined. You trusted in your wealth, you rebellious daughter, and thought no one could ever harm you. But look! I will bring terror upon you, says the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies. Your neighbors will chase you from your land, and no one will help your exiles as they flee. But I will restore the fortunes of the Ammonites in days to come. I, the Lord, have spoken. Messages about Edom This message was given concerning Edom. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies says. Is there no wisdom in Timon? Is no one left to give wise counsel? Turn and flee, hide in deep caves, you people of Dedan. For when I bring disaster on Edom, I will punish you too. Those who harvest grapes always leave a few for the poor. If thieves came at night, they would not take everything. But I will strip bare the land of Edom, and there will be no place left to hide. Its children, its brothers, and its neighbors will all be destroyed, and Edom itself will be no more. But I will protect the orphans who will remain among you. Your widows, too, can depend on me for help. And this is what the Lord says. If the innocent must suffer, how much more must you? You will not go unpunished. You must drink this cup of judgment. For I have sworn by my own name, says the Lord, that Basra will become an object of horror and a heap of ruins. It will be mocked and cursed. All its towns and villages will be desolate forever. I have heard a message from the Lord that an ambassador was sent to the nations to say, Form a coalition against Edom and prepare for battle. The Lord says to Edom, I will cut you down to size among the nations. You will be despised by all. You have been deceived by the fear you inspire in others and by your own pride. You live in a rock fortress and control the mountain heights. But even if you make your nest among the peaks with the eagles, I will bring you crashing down, says the Lord. Edom will be an object of horror. All who pass by will be appalled and will gasp at the destruction they see there. It will be like the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighboring towns, says the Lord. No one will live there. No one will inhabit it. I will come like a lion from the thickets of the Jordan, leaping on the sheep in the pasture. I will chase Edom from its land, and I will appoint the leader of my choice. For who is like me, and who can challenge me? What ruler can oppose my will? Listen to the Lord's plans against Edom and the people of Timon. Even the little children will be dragged off like sheep, and their homes will be destroyed. The earth will shake with the noise of Edom's fall, and its cry of despair will be heard all the way to the Red Sea. Look, the enemy swoops down like an eagle, spreading his wings over Basra. Even the mightiest warriors will be in anguish like a woman in labor. A Message About Damascus This message was given concerning Damascus. This is what the Lord says. The towns of Hamath and Arpad are struck with fear, for they have heard the news of their destruction. Their hearts are troubled like a wild sea in a raging storm. Damascus has become feeble, and all her people turn to flee. Fear, anguish, and pain have gripped her as they grip a woman in labor. That famous city, a city of joy, will be forsaken. Her young men will fall in the streets and die. Her soldiers will all be killed, says the Lord of Heaven's armies. And I will set fire to the walls of Damascus that will burn up the palaces of Ben-Hadad. A Message About Kedar and Hazor This message was given concerning Kedar and the kingdoms of Hazor, which were attacked by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. This is what the Lord says, Advance against Kedar. Destroy the warriors from the east. Their flocks and tents will be captured, and their household goods and camels will be taken away. Everywhere shouts of panic will be heard. We are terrorized at every turn. Run for your lives, says the Lord. 
Hide yourselves in deep caves, you people of Hazor, for King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon has plotted against you and is preparing to destroy you. Go up and attack that complacent nation, says the Lord. Its people live alone in the desert without walls or gates. Their camels and other livestock will all be yours. I will scatter to the winds these people who live in remote places. I will bring calamity upon them from every direction, says the Lord. Hazor will be inhabited by jackals, and it will be desolate forever. No one will live there. No one will inhabit it. End of Jehoiakim's Reign The rest of the events in Jehoiakim's reign and all his deeds are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. When Jehoiakim died, his son Jehoiachin became the next king. The king of Egypt did not venture out of his country after that. For the king of Babylon captured the entire area formerly claimed by Egypt, from the brook of Egypt to the Euphrates River. Then king Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came to Jerusalem and captured it, and he bound Jehoiakim in bronze chains and led him away to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar also took some of the treasures from the temple of the Lord, and he placed them in his palace in Babylon. The rest of the events in Jehoiakim's reign, including all the evil things he did and everything found against him, are recorded in the Book of the Kings of Israel and Judah. Then his son Jehoiachin became the next king. Jehoiachin rules in Judah. Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. His mother was Nehushta, the daughter of Elnathan from Jerusalem. Jehoiachin did what was evil in the Lord's sight, just as his father had done. From Second Chronicles Jehoiachin rules in Judah. Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months and ten days. Jehoiachin did what was evil in the Lord's sight. From Jeremiah A Message for Jehoiachin As surely as I live, says the Lord, I will abandon you, Jehoiachin, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah. Even if you were the signet ring on my right hand, I would pull you off. I will hand you over to those who seek to kill you, those you so desperately fear, to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon and the mighty Babylonian army. I will expel you and your mother from this land, and you will die in a foreign country, not in your native land. You will never again return to the land you yearn for. Why is this man, Jehoiachin, like a discarded broken jar? Why are he and his children to be exiled to a foreign land? Oh, earth, 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 listen to this message from the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Let the record show that this man Jehoiachin was childless. He is a failure, for none of his children will succeed him on the throne of David to rule over Judah. The Righteous Branch What sorrow awaits the leaders of my people, the shepherds of my sheep, for they have destroyed and scattered the very ones they were expected to care for, says the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to these shepherds. Instead of caring for my flock and leading them to safety, you have deserted them and driven them to destruction. Now I will pour out judgment on you for the evil you have done to them. But I will gather together the remnant of my flock from the countries where I have driven them. I will bring them back to their own sheepfold, and they will be fruitful and increase in number. Then I will appoint responsible shepherds who will care for them, and they will never be afraid again. Not a single one will be lost or missing. I, the Lord, have spoken. For the time is coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous descendant from King David's line. He will be a king who rules with wisdom. He will do what is just and right throughout the land. And this will be his name. The Lord is our righteousness. In that day Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. In that day, says the Lord, when people are taking an oath, they will no longer say, as surely as the Lord lives, who rescued the people of Israel from the land of Egypt. Instead, they will say, as surely as the Lord lives, who brought the people of Israel back to their own land from the land of the north and from all the countries to which he had exiled them. Then they will live in their own land. Judgment on False Prophets My heart is broken because of the false prophets, and my bones tremble. I stagger like a drunkard, like someone overcome by wine, because of the holy words the Lord has spoken against them. For the land is full of adultery, 
and it lies under a curse. The land itself is in mourning, its wilderness pastures are dried up. For they all do evil and abuse what power they have. Even the priests and prophets are ungodly, wicked men. I have seen their despicable acts right here in my own temple, says the Lord. Therefore the paths they take will become slippery. They will be chased through the dark, and there they will fall. For I will bring disaster upon them at the time fixed for their punishment. I, the Lord, have spoken." I saw that the prophets of Samaria were terribly evil, for they prophesied in the name of Baal and led my people of Israel into sin. But now I see that the prophets of Jerusalem are even worse. They commit adultery and love dishonesty. They encourage those who are doing evil so that no one turns away from their sins. These prophets are as wicked as the people of Sodom and Gomorrah once were. Therefore, this is what the Lord of heaven's army says concerning the prophets. I will feed them with bitterness and give them poison to drink, for it is because of Jerusalem's prophets that wickedness has filled this land. This is what the Lord of heaven's army says to his people. Do not listen to these prophets when they prophesy to you, filling you with futile hopes. They are making up everything they say. They do not speak for the Lord. They keep saying to those who despise my word, Don't worry, the Lord says you will have peace. And to those who stubbornly follow their own desires, they say, No harm will come your way. Have any of these prophets been in the Lord's presence to hear what he is really saying? Has even one of them cared enough to listen? Look, the Lord's anger bursts out like a storm, a whirlwind that swirls down on the heads of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not diminish until it has finished all he has planned. In the days to come, you will understand all this very clearly. I have not sent these prophets, yet they run around claiming to speak for me. I have given them no message, yet they go on prophesying. If they had stood before me and listened to me, they would have spoken my words, and they would have turned my people from their evil ways and deeds. Am I a God who is only close at hand, says the Lord? No, I am far away at the same time. Can anyone hide from me in a secret place? Am I not everywhere in all the heavens and earth, says the Lord? I have heard these prophets say, Listen to the dream I had from God last night. And then they proceed to tell lies in my name. How long will this go on? If they are prophets, they are prophets of deceit, inventing everything they say. By telling these false dreams, they are trying to get my people to forget me, just as their ancestors did by worshiping the idols of Baal. Let these false prophets tell their dreams, but let my true messengers faithfully proclaim my every word. There is a difference between straw and grain. Does not my word burn like fire, says the Lord? Is it not like a mighty hammer that smashes a rock to pieces? Therefore, says the Lord, I am against these prophets who steal messages from each other and claim they are from me. I am against these smooth-tongued prophets who say, This prophecy is from the Lord. I am against these false prophets. Their imaginary dreams are flagrant lies that lead my people into sin. I did not send or appoint them, and they have no message at all for my people. I, the Lord, have spoken.